Thinking can refer to many things. You may be aware of a feeling and have the voice in your head describe the feeling or simply just note it. You may try to work out a logical or mathematical problem longhand, so to speak, in your mind. You might daydream and enjoy the stories running around in your head. The common denominator with these examples and others is the awareness of verbal ideas or of non-verbal states. Sometimes these are easily found in your mind. At other times you might be directing your attention towards another part of your body. The technical name for thinking is cognition. When we think about our ideas or reflect on our feelings about truth and knowledge, we call this epistemic cognition. Epistemic meaning relating to knowledge. Perhaps we may doubt the truth of something we hear or read. This epistemic doubt may motivate us to find out more information about the topic in an effort to resolve that doubt, one way or another. Or perhaps we may tell ourselves that so-and-so famous author said that too, so it must be true. Our certainty about the truth of the statement is based on our belief that the author speaks or writes only the truth. In a meaningful sense, we have outsourced our own need to investigate the actual truthfulness of the statement. The belief in so-and-so allows us to place our trust in the person and forgo any effort into thinking deeper about the issue for ourselves. At times, this sourcing rule of thumb, or heuristic, is a valuable time saver. At other times, we may end up believing the wrong things for the wrong reasons. There are other heuristics connected to our beliefs about truth and knowledge. We may believe that human knowledge consists of many facts that are out there in the world. The job of scientists, so this heuristic goes, is to find those facts. Teachers then give them to students, and students' role is to learn them. This view of the world is called positivism, and it is, interestingly, very similar to how young children see the world. Let's call this the outside fact heuristic. Again, like the outsourcing heuristic, the outside fact heuristic can be used in helpful and in, in unhelpful ways. Imagine if someone believed that the world actually exists only inside their own mind. Such a person would never need to communicate with others. Or if they did try to communicate, they would not believe anything anyone else said. This extreme view is actually theoretically possible, but it's so unproductive as to be practically meaningless. We humans need to have a balance somewhere between accepting that everything is an outside fact and its opposite, that everything we know is created purely in our heads. If we are aware of our epistemic heuristics, we can use them wisely. If, however, we don't realise that we're using heuristics, our abilities to get to the depth of any truth will be hampered. It will be limited to the extent of our lack of awareness of that heuristic. Epistemic cognition, then, is not only a description of how we think about truth issues, it's also a way for us to chart our own thinking development. The thing is, we can't simply read a book or attend a lecture on a topic like epistemic cognition and suddenly become better thinkers. We need to actively think about our own thinking and during that thinking we can read about better models of thinking to see if our own thinking stands up or not. This is a process, it turns out, that takes quite a bit of time.